What's up everybody, today is April 1st and I've decided to prank Michaela for the first time. She's freaking out right now because I've, I'm telling her through text that I have COVID-19 symptoms. So we're texting each other and she's freaking out and I'm feeling so bad, but can you blame me? <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna video call her and show her that I'm fine. We're all gonna laugh about this in the end. <laughs> Hello. Hey, how you doing? Okay, how are you? I'm good. Just wanted to say, April Fools. I'm sick of this shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's so dumb. <laughs> I even called it out too. I was like, it's better be a fucking April Fool's joke. <laughs> no. Like, fine. fine. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I felt bad. I felt hella bad right now. I'm glad that you're healthy at least. Yeah. And that you're not actually showing any symptoms of COVID. Yeah. You're stupid for making me worry about you for no reason. That goes to show how much you care. <laughs> I was literally about to text Francesca too and be like, Hey, so I was gonna drop this off at your house, but the person who was supposed to give me a ride is actually maybe sick. So just kidding. Good thing I didn't. I thought you were gonna call and tell me like, yeah, so I have these symptoms, blah, 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 like, et cetera, et cetera. I should probably self-quarantine yourself. And then I was about to be like, holy shit, is this because Andrew came home and he was traveling? <laughs> like, did you disinfect everything? Did you make him wash himself? Like, all this stuff. <laughs> Take a sanitizer shower. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> have a great working, day. working, man. And that's how it's done. <laughs> Have you ever thought about what you love and hate about yourself? I question that all the time, and the reason for this video is to help you understand who I am as a person and also have you question yourself as well. Here are five major reasons on why I love and hate myself. We're gonna start our way to the negative side and work our way up to the positive side. Hate point number one. I hate how socially awkward and anxious I get in a group setting. I'm sure a lot of people feel like this and need some hypothetical object or substance to keep them afloat in a sea of people they don't know. How I get over my social anxiety? is by drinking. I know it's not good to rely on depressants to unleash your social butterfly, and I'm not saying that you should drink until you're blacked out, but this is just how I handle my social anxiety. Punto numero dos. For those who know me know how introverted I am and how I pretty much bury myself in my phone for a temporary escape when I start to feel a little anxious. When I was a kid, I used to be outgoing until I hit middle school. Around that time, that's when everything changed. I wanted to be like the cool kids and try to be something I wasn't. I used to get made fun of by how weird I looked, how I dressed, and how I was as a person. Don't get me wrong, they cared, but when you feel alone and feel like the laughing suck of the group, that shit messes up your growth. Point number three, I use self-deprecating humor too lightly to the point my friends would become concerned. I'm actually trying to work on that. What can I say? It's become my defense mechanism for when I feel useless or awkward. Yeah. For example, when I make a joke and it sounds stupid and I get no laughs out of it, then I just look down and say to myself, well, I guess I'm gonna kill myself. Don't worry, I'm not gonna be doing anything stupid like that. And like I said, I'm working on bettering it and telling myself that it's okay. Point number four. I'm insecure in my words and have a fear of public speaking. I know it's shocker, right? You'd think I'd be a natural at this, but this actually took me a few tries to do. <laughs> okay, let me explain. I'm far from a smooth talker. Talker. See, that was one take right there. I'm far from a smooth talker, and when I stalk somebody... <laughs> I'm far from a smooth talker, and when I talk to someone, I mix my words and I overthink a lot of what I'm gonna say next, and that could mess up the train of thought that I'm having and fumble my words around. I guess I'm just an overthinker, but I'm actually working on that, on which I'll explain the loving points. Point number five, dollar foot long. I always feel like I'm never good enough. I often compare myself to other people, and I usually feel disappointed. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. I'm the oldest of four boys, and growing up, I was always compared to my younger brother, Andrew. He's a year younger than me. Now, my mom and grandfather would always praise Andrew, and what, no matter what obstacles I've overcame and accomplished, I felt like I was never good enough for anything. Now, up until last year, it's been eating me up from the inside, and I always felt ashamed of myself, but uh, I came to terms and I actually you know, had a conversation with my brother, my mom, 
and we worked things out. I told them how I felt, and they, you know, they understood. And you know, my mom tried to make me feel like I was loved, and I appreciate that. And with Andrew, um, he was at a loss of words, um, from what I remember. But I told him, no matter what, I will always love him as a brother. You know, we're family, and you know, sometimes you just gotta get over that hump, and then live your life because you can't be compared to you can't just dwell on being compared to someone when you don't even know who you are so just gotta get out there and live your own life instead of comparing yourself to other people and when I told them it was like a weight lifted off my shoulders all that envy all that anger and all that jealousy just lifted up and pretty much disappeared and I was able to live my life and be happy after that. After talking to my family, I realized it wasn't their intentions to make me feel this way. And Andrew had no idea that I was feeling like this. Um, so that just goes to show that you shouldn't be assuming a lot of these aspects where you're just constantly in this loop of envy and jealousy. Oh God. That's it for the hating points. Now it's time for the loving points. I'm not sure if this is gonna mirror. Okay. L for love, number one. I love how I can build relationships with people individually. I enjoy deep, meaningful conversations and getting to know people. It's therapeutic and a great way to connect. When any one of my friends have a problem and need some advice, I'm always there and I tap into my empathetic side and listen to what they have to say. It's something I've been practicing. How many fruits were there? That's right, two. I love how now I pretty much don't let the little things bother me. I used to dwell on every little thing that happens and it used to fester into anger. If you compared me to how I was back then to how I am now, there's a big difference on how I handle a lot of things. It took me this past year to become aware of my ways and shouldn't let minor things like messing up a sentence bother me. I still dwell on it a little bit, but it's definitely better than before. Point number three. I'm more in touch with my feelings than ever before. Over the past year, I took this time to better understand my feelings. Along the way, I made new friends and became closer to my existing friends because of how supportive they are with me expressing myself instead of making me feel ashamed for feeling negative. I guess you can call me a big softie now, but I'm more compassionate, open-minded, supportive, caring, altruistic, understanding. That's all because of this. Number four. I accept myself for who I am as a person. I admit it. I am pretty damn awkward and cringy at times, but you can't take away the fact that I'm entertaining and a good human being. I'm that guy in the group that will prolong eye contact and then lick his lips in a sexual manner, but it'll always make you laugh. My awkwardness is your happiness. Vlogging has definitely made me feel more comfortable with who I am, but believe me, I cringe every time I have to edit these videos. Point number five. I'm always growing and bettering myself each and every day. People talk about growth all the time, but what type of effort are they putting in to stimulate that growth? Communication has never been a skill that I was good at. I would feel very insecure in my words and overthink what I would say next. The steps I've taken on becoming a better communicator were to read out loud and practice talking, especially with friends. I'm still working on my growth and I'm very fortunate to have friends who are patient, supportive, and caring. I love you all. And that's the list of five things I love and hate about myself. I know hate's a strong word, but for the sake of this video, I used it as a dislike just to have a better impact of how I felt growing up. I hope this video can help you all identify these traits, whether you love or hate yourself. I know this has been therapeutic for me, talking about how I felt and how I got over and bettering myself because of this. So, it's for you. And that's it for the video. Make sure to leave a like, share, and subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Let me know how I'm doing, and because I want to interact with you. And the would you rather question of the video, would you rather have constant dry eyes or constant runny nose? Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. I hope you enjoyed this video. I worked very hard on it, and I just gotta say, remember, the grass is always greener on the other side. <laughs> Weather is nice, but I'm keeping inside with my mind in the clouds where my feelings reside. Live another day, dream sequence of mine Where I seek and then find love by a tree in the sky Find a little happy in the lilies and the daffodils Maybe find
<laughs> oh, my six pack. <laughs> Frog splash. <laughs> <laughs>